Hey everyone. So uh, we're getting back to Haskell now. Um, and one of the first things we need to talk about is a very important Haskell feature called type classes. Um, and maybe I think I've mentioned it once or twice before. But um, in order to motivate this, um, I think the best way to motivate it is um, the following. So we all know that we can do equals equals to test whether things are equal, right? So I can ask if it's equal to 3, it says false, right? I can ask if x is equal to x, it says true. I can ask if the list 1, 2, 3 is equal to the list 1, 2, 3, I get true. Okay, so let's think about how we might implement this ourselves. So I'm, I'm not going to call it uh, equals equals, I'll just call it you know, equals. What type should it have? So you can see that uh, over here on the right, um, we used double equals on a lot of different types. So here I've used it on two ints. Here I used it on two chars. Here I used it on two lists of ints. Okay, so really there's some kind of polymorphism going on. So maybe we want to say uh, it, it can be any type you want, but it has to be the same type, right? It doesn't make sense to say you know, does two equal the list one, two, three? That should be a type error. But as long as you give it two things of the same type, it's gonna return you a bool, true or false, or the equal. Okay, well, if we try to implement this, um, we're very stuck because, because of parametricity, right? So parametricity, remember, is this idea that uh, when you have a polymorphic function, it has to work in a uniform way for any input type that the caller of the function wants to choose. And there's no possible way to say, well, if the input type is you know, int, then do this, and if it's this other type, then do this other thing. Um, so uh, we don't have, there's really no way that we can implement this as written. Um, so then the question is, well, how on earth does the equals equals work? And so in some languages, um, that were prior to Haskell. For example, there was a language called uh, Miranda that Haskell was a predecessor to Haskell. Um, it had this kind of equality, but equality was sort of magical and built in specially, and um, it worked on some types and it just would kind of crash or something if you called it on other types. Um, mm -hmm. But um, Haskell introduced this mechanism of type classes to do this in a principled way. So uh, let's look at, if we look at the type of the equals operator, uh, we'll see that it does not actually have this type. So this type is a lie. You cannot implement something of this type precisely because of what we just said, right? Because parametricity says this has to work for any type A you want, and there's really no way to do that uniformly. It, how you check for equality depends on the type A that you choose. Um, so if you look at the type of equals. Notice it actually has this extra EQA double arrow thing. Um, and so this says, oh, this will work for any type A as long as A is an instance of this type class EQ. And so uh, let's say this can't be implemented because of parametricity. So what does the type class EQ look like? So we're going to, um, we'll make our own. So this is like the standard class EQ. Okay, so the way you make a type class is you say class, you give it the name of the type class, and then, you know, some type variable where, and then we have to say uh, what things need to be implemented for something to be a member of this type class. So this is actually very similar to a Java interface um, where you say, you know, anything that in Java you would say any type that implements this interface has to have these methods defined. And so similarly we're going to say any type that wants to be a, a member of, or instance of this type class has to have these methods or these functions defined. Um, so in particular, yes, for your type A you do need to implement something of type A to A to bool. Right, but this is going to be specific to whatever type A that we're talking about at the moment. Um, this doesn't have to work generically. And we can also have a not equal to, which is similarly A to A to bool. Um, 
You can actually give these default implementations. So for example, you could implement not equal to in terms of equal to. So then all you have to do is define equal to when you're defining the class. Um, you can go look that up if you want. I'm not going to talk about it too much right now. Um, but uh, we can now do things like, you know, uh, I guess I can't call these. I'll call them like triple equals and not triple equals. Um, just because I don't want them to clash with the, uh, the standard things. So I can make an instance of my equal class like this. I can say instance equal um, int where. OK, so this says I'm making int an instance of this type class. So that means I'd better implement these uh, two functions specifically for a being int. And if, you, if I look at this, uh, it's yelling at me and it's saying, hey, you, you're missing some implement, your method implementations. You have not implemented triple equals and triple not equals yet. So I can do that. I can say, um, you know, x um, well, of course, this is probably just going to work the same as the normal equals, so I can just say uh, I'm just implementing them in terms of the standard equal and not equal from uh, the standard library. Um, we could, you know what, just for fun, we could we could make we could make different implementations here. We could say um, two ints are equal when they have the same remainder mod ten. So I'll say if x mod ten equals y mod ten, and then I could say they are not triple equal when they are not triple equal. So I'm actually defining this in terms of the triple equal that I just defined. Um, and if I load this, I can say, you know, is 3 triple equal to 5? Whoops. Oh, I see. Uh, right. Just the constant 3 can actually uh, can have a bunch of different types. It could be an int, or it could be a double, it could be, you know, an integer. And Haskell doesn't know which type I want. I only have an instance of this for int, so we can do this. to pin down the types of those numbers. Um, this should be false, right? But if I ask, for example, is 3, so let's make this go away. Is 3 triple equal to 13? It says true, because they have the same remainder mod 10. OK. Um, and notice, I can do things like, if I write a function, um, you know, let's say a to a to int, and I'll say this function, you know, takes an x and a y, and then I have a guard that says if x is triple equal to y, then I'm going to return three. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, I'm going to return you know 19. Um, and I'm getting an error. Not let me click there. Um, right, the error is because this function type signature claims that this is going to work for any type A at all that you choose. Um, but that's not true because uh, I call triple equals on these two values of type A. And triple equals, right, works for any type which has been made an instance of this type class but it's not going to work for any arbitrary type that you want. And so it is rightly yelling at me that, um, what does the actual error message say? It says, hey, you don't have an instance of equal A, right? I don't know, I, I have no guarantees that there's going to be an instance of equal A. And so I can fix that by saying, right, every, anything before this double arrow is like a context where you can say, um, what things are instances of type classes. So this says, as long as A is any type that has an instance of equal, um, then uh, you can do this. And now it's OK. And in fact, if I had not uh, put a type for F, 
uh, if I just let it load and then I ask for the type of f, it's going to infer that same type. <laughs> Actually, it's inferring an even more general type. Um, it says, oh, the return type um, can be any type p as long as p is an instance of this class, this standard class called num. Um, and so that's why 3 and 19, like, they could be integer, they could be float, they could be double, whatever. So, I don't know, maybe we could say it like, maybe we'll make them chars instead. Um, so that is the type that it, it inferred. That works just fine. Um, one other thing I will show you, right? Of course, in the standard library, this is called this type. This class is called EQ. Um, so let's make our own little data type here. So I'll say a, b, you know, okay, just a few different constructors. Um, and if I want to, oh, okay, I need to enable GDTs. Let's run now. Okay, it's happy now. Um, if I load this up, and if I try to say, you know, is A equal to B? Uh, I get an error and it says there's no instance for EQ of Q, right? I don't know how to compare values of type Q for equality. And that makes sense because I haven't told it that Q should be an instance of EQ. Now we could write one ourselves. So it would be something like, um, where we have to implement, uh, we'd say like, oh, A equals A is true, B equals B is true. Uh, let's see, in the case that we have two C's, so if CX cy is just the result of asking whether x is equal to y. And then in any other case, I'm going to return false. Okay, so now if I ask if a is equal to b, I get false. You know, is c n equal to c n true? That works. But actually, right, this is kind of a this is kind of annoying because this code is going to look the, pretty much the same for any data type that you can think of. And so in fact, we don't have to do this. Um, there's a bunch of type classes where GHC can basically generate code for you. So uh, we've already seen show. You can derive show and then it knows how to turn those things into strings, but you can also derive instances of EQ. So now it automatically knows how to compare them for equality. So I've reloaded it now. It's now no longer using that code I wrote because it's commented out. It's using the automatically generated uh, equality instance from GHC. Okay, in the next video, um, I'll show an example of making our own type class um, and playing around with making some different instances for it.